Hello viewers and welcome to another match of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. My name is Mitch and I am the Hive Tyrant. Today, I'm honored to share with you the fourth of a series of eight individual games each sent in to me by a gentleman named Anton Elizarov. Together, they help retell the events of the 2015 Russian National Championships and this game is going to be featuring one of several rounds of Swiss which which took place at that tournament. To the left, we have a player piloting an alternate art version of our warlord Eldrath Starbane. His name is Klim Petrov. And to the right, we see Vasily Gudkov, whom instead is going to be playing as Ragnar Blackmane, our second Space Marines faction warlord, and Vasily is beginning the game holding our initiative token. His opening deploy action is going to be positioning a rattling deadeye at planet number two for the cost of one resource. It's it's got one command, one attack, one hit point, and the range keyword at a planet where Ragnar will not naturally possess initiative. But on the Eldar side of the table at planet number five, we've got a copy of Eldar Survivalist, two cost, one command, zero attack, two hit points, but of paramount importance, it's got a plus one card and plus one resource bonus, which isn't doing anything because on the Space Marine side of the table, we've now got a copy of the one command icon, two cost, tactical squad Cardenas, uh, blocking off that effect entirely. It's got one attack, three hit points, and area effect one, and it looks as though Eldarath is applying a lot of pressure to planet number one with the deployment of the four-cost unique Eldar faction army unit, Autark Salakia. Definitely something to keep in mind for Nullify, but one command icon, three attack, three hit points, so it's a little bit expensive for the cost, but for the additional investment of a loan, uh, additional resource, it can gain either Mobile or Armor Bane or Area Effect 1, which persists for the remainder of the round. So, Planet number four, we see a rogue trader played out by Vasily to the right. It's a one cost, one command icon, plus one resource bonus unit, but it's immediately shut down by a copy of Bealtan Guardians on the opposite side. Uh, that's a one cost, two command icon unit, and you might as well stop reading the card right there. Note, planet number five, we see our limited card for a space marine this round. It's going to be the zero cost promotion, which means three command icons on that tax squad uh, nicely shut off the one associated with the Eldar survivalist. But both of our players have commit their warlords to planets. Ragnar shows up at planet number one. Eldrath instead arrives at planet number two. He's able to exhaust that rattling deadeye, presumably going to be able to kill that off prior to its becoming a threat. And considering which warlords we're seeing in this video, keep in mind that Black Mane's hunt or foresight might result in the relocation of some of these units at any point. Looks like we may have used superiority uh, by our Eldar player to shut down some of the card or resource bonuses that uh, Ragnar might be collecting, but planet number one, Ragnar is going to pick up a couple of cards. Planet number two, that's going to be a card and a resource to the left for Eldarath. Planet number three, neither of our players is going to end up winning anything. At planet number four, that's going to be a couple of resources to the left for Eldarath. Planet number five, that is going to be a card and a resource won by Ragnar. And uh, like I said, that uh, Eldar survivalist is doing absolutely nothing. So here is the trick. Ragnar is alone at planet number one, and he's going to be fighting a 3-3 unit, depending on how many shield cards our Eldar player may have in hand, that could be an absolute nightmare to chew through, uh, just because that unit could gain Armor Bane, and it looks as though Klim is going to be spending a resource token on something, uh, so Ragnar's attack was decreased down to a value of 1, and uh, what exactly are we going to see? Looks like that's going to be 3 points of damage dealt out to Ragnar Blackmane, I can only imagine that that resource token meant uh, that it gained Armor Bane as opposed to Area Effect, but we see an eager recruit hit the tabletop, it is going to be taking an attack. Does our Eldar player have a two shield value in uh, card in hand is my question, and the answer is not exactly. Uh, nullify is going to be one shield, but uh, that doesn't even matter, so one point of damage plus uh, crushing blow serving as a bit of a c -c -c combo breaker, and that is going to be a dead Autark Salakia. Congratulations to you, uh, Ragnar, for winning that planet, but it looks as though Eldarath has exhausted to use a copy of Fortel, so Ragnar is going to end up having the opportunity to draw a card, but that is going to be a copy of Drop Pot Assault dropped into play. I can only imagine at planet number two, what is a poor life choice when you're playing against a Space Marine player? Why? The answer is going to be exhausting your Warlord. And uh, let's see how this is going to ultimately pay off for Eldarath. Will we see Honored Librarian or Blood Angels Veterans? And uh, 
I think I happen to spy more than one drop pot of salt in Ragnar's hand, so maybe this is going to get absolutely ridiculous, but let us see here. Foretell shut off the forced random card discard effect associated with Barless, so our Space Marine has a green planet type icon added to his victory display, albeit ever so slightly off camera. Oh, that about sucks. So Tactical Squad Cardenas is going to interplay at planet number two. It's, you know, area effect one. God, you really wanted something a lot harder hitting when it comes to driving Eldrath away from that planet, but we're going to come to the end of a combat round. All of these units are going to ready. Will they retreat or will they stay? Looks like they stay. Eldrath stays to kill uh, that copy of the Rattling Deadeye. Looks like Archon's Terror is going to banish the Tactical Squad Cardenas away from that planet. Karnath's battle ability is going to be activated by Eldrath, I can only imagine, and that is going to be a fantastic opportunity to trigger. Let's see. Eldrath has got three units. Our Space Marine players got five units, so Taurus is not an option. Uh, let's see, Oslis 4 could result in stealing one resource, uh, or Planum could allow him to relocate one of his units, so I'm not exactly sure what battle ability I saw activated. I could only imagine it must have been Oslis 4, uh, because, you know, no reason to just completely forego stealing a resource. God, you know, uh, anyway, just obvious play is obvious, but HQ phase has come and go. That's going to be four resources and two cards for each of our players. Our new fifth planet is going to be Aatrox Prime, uh, the orbital bombardment style planet. And what exactly is going to occur here? So, Eldrath is going to have his opportunity to deploy first. Uh, Ragnar's HQ is rather clogged with units, and it looks as though Eldrath has thrown out a copy of one of the Warlord Friends. It's going to be our ever-popular Bloodied Reavers, a vehicle trait, two cost, one command, two attack, two hit point unit that gets a plus two attack value bonus whenever a Warlord happens to be present at that planet. Ragnar throws out a second copy of Rattling Deadeye, positioned at planet number one, and now I'm deadly curious as to whether or not we'll see something along the lines of a Katachan outpost to potentially snipe off that bloodied Reavers prior to it having uh, the opportunity to attack akin to, I don't know, something with the mass of a Space Hulk here. Planet number five, we see a Void Pirate being played out by our rather economy uh, commanding Eldar player. That's going to be potentially two cards and one resource unless uh, Ragnar does something about it. And note, uh, Ragnar does have a bit of damage on him, so so showing up at planet number one and uh, potentially having to deal with the presence of a bloodied Reavers uh, punching him right in the face could uh, definitely be something desirous to avoid. Uh, planet number two, we've got one of our lieutenant-type units from the core set. It's going to be veteran Brother Maxos touching down on Taurus. Planet number two, three cost, two command, two uh, attack value, three hit points. And uh, as an action, or, well, a combat action, you can basically just put a Space Marine faction unit from your hand uh, into play at that planet, and it does not count as being deployed. Uh, for our Eldar player, he threw out a copy of Incubus Warrior, two cost, two command, three attack, one hit point, positioned at Taurus, uh, Notably, Eldrath is going to have initiative if uh, no if no warlords show up at the first planet, and uh, veteran brother Maxos is a lovely threat uh, to deter. Eldrath from showing up at planet number two. So it looks like Eldrath is going to arrive at planet number one. He's going to shut down that rattling Deadeye. Uh, Ragnar goes to planet number five. So he's going to shut off the Void Pirate, and he'll get an opportunity, presumably, to blast Eldrath's HQ. All the units they're in for one point of damage. Looks like we see another copy of Superiority played by our Eldar player. I wish there were an easier way to tell uh, what unit he is shutting off the command icons associated with. Uh, although, in, I guess in that case, I can only imagine well, both times it was probably Planum uh, for the two resources and two cards. So the Bloodied Reavers at planet number one, that takes a swing, kills off that Rattling Deadeye. Planet number one, by the way, is going to be a card and a resource to the left for Eldrath. Planet number two is going to be nothing for either of our players, and planet number three is going to be uh, two resources yet again for Eldrath, who's just doing great in regard to command. Like I said before, I can only imagine that two consecutive turns in a row, uh, the tactical squad Cardenas was hit hard by superiority, so therefore that's going to be two cards, two resources for Eldrath, and uh, Aatrox Prime is going to be a card and a resource for Eldrath, or sorry, for Ragnar. 
And uh, by drawing all those cards, I can only imagine we're going to be seeing another copy of Drop Pot Assault that was not nullified. So let us see what exactly is going to be taking place. Are we going to see some big, beefy, badass Space Marine unit show up at planet number one, take a swing, kill that bloodied Reavers, and then drive? Uh, Eldrath away from that planet. Looks like our Space Marines got four, five, six, seven units in total relative to Eldrath six. So if the bloodied Reavers die, uh, the Space Marine player is not going to have an opportunity to trigger Taurus. But there you go. That is a hell of a lot better than a tactical squad Cardenas. So let's see if we can make this uh, value angels veterans or blood angels value trends or something along those lines. But no, it's going to be Archon's Terror banishing that unit away uh, from that planet and uh, shame on that Blood Angels veterans. He should have to turn in his uh, Terminator honors uh, for, you know, being scared away from that planet. Uh, shameful. A shameful display. So, uh, Eldrath, I can only imagine, is now going to be winning Karnath entirely uncontested. So, what is it going to be? Uh, it looks like he added some uh, resources to his uh, pile there, and that's going to be, yeah, three, four, five, six uh, units controlled by Eldrath relative to four, five, six, seven for our Space Marines. So, that draw pot assault went all the way bad uh, had you just let things remain as they were I guess maybe the worst case scenario would have been uh I don't know, Asus stealing a resource from you or something along those lines. But looks like at planet number five, that is going to be an incredibly dead uh, copy of Rogue Trader. And uh, I suppose at the end of the combat round, Ragnar used that opportunity to retreat uh, with the eager recruit away from that planet. Uh, just because if all of your units are exhausted, you ready, then you have an opportunity to retreat. And uh, then a new combat round begins. You've got an action window, and then you've got a combat turn, and then battle concludes. So that eager recruit definitely did a pretty decent thing in running away from that planet so good on you Vasily for just uh you know pulling an awesome play uh, on that planet and uh, Aatrox Prime looks like that fired off Delta point of damage to Eldrath who's now sitting at two uh, total points of damage and the bloodied Reavers is sitting at 50% of its HP but it's uh, still entirely operational in regard to how much uh, I don't know uh, damage it can output so our new planet number five now that we've had an HQ phase come and go note four uh, resources two cards for each of our players new planet number five I was saying is Yavarn it's that planet that allows both players to put a uh, an arm unit from their hand directly into play into their HQ. It looks like our Space Marine is passed because we see a copy of Starbane's Council positioned at planet number one. It's a three cost three three with a command icon when it attacks an already exhausted unit. It does so at a plus two uh, attack value bonus. So five attack value for three resources. Count me in. Go figure that a signature army unit synergizes perfectly with its warlord. And uh, note we've got a copy of Spirit Seer Aerithal at planet number four. Two, uh, sorry, three cost two command, uh, two attack, three hit points whenever it's declared an attack. Attacker, you can strip a point of damage off of another friendly Eldar unit at that planet, and we've got a copy of Eldar Survivalist at planet number five. So, Ragnar shows up at planet number three, Eldarath shows up at planet number three. That means Ragnar is going to have an opportunity to take a pot shot at one of these units, uh, anything of his choice. Uh, we see a copy of Fortel discarded as a shield, and therefore that's going to be a point. Uh, okay, I guess uh, the Eldar Survivalist is dead, so I'm not exactly sure... Uh, how that worked, because we did see Fortel discarded as shields, and the last time I checked, uh, I don't know, maybe he crushing blowed the Eldar Survivalist? I don't know, weird. Uh, regardless, planet number one is going to be a card and a resource to the left for Eldrath. Planet number two is going to be a couple of resources to the left for Eldrath. Planet number three uh, is going to be nothing because of the exhausting effect that Eldrath had upon that tax squad Cardenas. Three command icons is now zero. Uh, and then planet number four is going to be a card and a resource to the left for Eldrath, and things are starting to look really bad economically for our space marine. Planet number five, by the way, is one card and two resources for Eldrath because he's not already making enough money. So... Planet number one, the initiative is going to be in the possession of our Space Marine. A swing of two is insufficient to kill off the Starbane's Council, and, uh... Man, I guess really all I can say is that, uh... We saw that poor veteran brother Maxos pay for his transgression, so he is going to be quite handily killed off by that Starbane's Council, and that is going to be another planet won by Eldrath, so that's going to be two red material type icons for Eldrath, that's only going to be one green uh, strong point type icon for Ragnar, and now there's going to be all kinds of battle breaking out at planet number three, Ragnar with his uh, I don't know, I guess his not actually equipped Frostfang, his uh, you know, knockoff run-of-the-mill 
uh, new initiate chain sword is going to take a swing, deal two points of damage successfully out to Eldrath. And now Eldrath only has three hit points remaining, so it's a bit of a shame we didn't see the triple crushing blow. Uh, Eldrath takes a swing, kills off that eager recruit. Do we have a draw pot assault or eager recruit? I suppose the answer is going to be no, but uh, Spirit Seer Arathal could have potentially nullified that business regardless. Looks like at the end of the combat round, Eldrath decides to quite wisely retreat. He uh, brings his bloodied reavers with him, and now Ragnar is going to have the opportunity to reposition uh, any one of his units to the planet of his choice. Is it going to be the Blood Angels veterans? Is it going to be attack squad? What exactly is it going to be? I suppose what he definitely has to do is block Aatrox Prime, because otherwise his opponent will win the game based on that planet, or otherwise, if uh, Eldrath ends up winning planet number one and planet number two, well, our soon-to-be planet one and two, that is going to be the game for him as well, but if our Space Marine just kind of, you know, stays on target, manages to land a uh, Proton Torpedo successfully into the Death Star and captures Planets 1 and 2, that could be the game for him as well. Uh, because even though you cannot see it currently on screen, he did happen to capture Barless, and that green strong point icon means he's one-third of the way toward victory. So things are looking pretty good for Eldrath, but uh, there's certainly a hell of a lot of Space Marine combat units sitting out there on the tabletop, and it's going to be a bit of an uphill battle for uh, really either player to win at this point. It definitely doesn't look like a shoe in for either one, uh, but definitely note just how full Eldrath's HQ is of units, and uh, therefore his movement is going to be pretty confined. So during the following round, let's see, he's maybe, like, if it were me, I'd probably allow planet number one to go uh, uncontested. I would definitely block off my opponent. Like, if Eldrath shows up at planet number two, uh, unless Ragnar puts a lot of formidable combat units into play, you're going to be able to exhaust that tactical squad, Cardenas, and then you'll have initiative no matter what. And uh, your units are going to be able to absolutely just uh, curb stomp that uh, squadron of space marines there, uh, even through their helmets. <laughs> as horrifying as a mental image as that may be. So, uh, I guess we'll just have to see who to deploys what, where, but we've seen another HQ phase. There are no new planets. Note to the right that Ragnar's got a far more shallow pool of resource tokens uh, than does our Eldar opponent. And let us see, that is going to be a two-cost black main sentinel being put out into play at planet number four. And that is always a little bit of a tricky thing to do, because if you throw the Black Main Sentinel to planet number four, you're able to block off your opponent's uh, Eldar Survivalist, but if during the command phase you reposition the Black Main Sentinel to the same planet as sits your Warlord, uh, then you're potentially allowing your opponent to win that command struggle. And that definitely sucks. Uh, and it, you know, it doesn't really help that we see a Void Pirate put out to planet number four by Eldrath, the fantastic economy player here, Klim. Uh, but a second promotion is now affixed to that Black Main Sentinel, so it's currently winning uh, command. But, you know, you're investing two resources and two cards and your limited play for the round, all to win one resource. Granted, you are shutting off your opponent from winning a, a grand total of two cards and two resources, but still, now your Black Main Sentinel is basically stranded at a planet, and it's a relatively combat-capable unit. It's eligible for Indomitable and uh, Crushing Blow, as is so many other Space Marines, uh, but it's not going to do you any good because it's played out further than sits... Uh, your opponent's victory condition and your own victory condition, but, you know, it's relocatable, so I suppose we'll have to see what happens with that unit, but we've got another copy of Black Main Sentinel now positioned at planet number three, so, uh, Eldra, or sorry, Ragnar's actually looking to do quite a bit better in regard to command, and we see a promotion affixed to that Eldar survivalist, so I suppose that gives Ragnar permission that his Black Main Sentinel can go to prom without a chaperone, uh, he can be repositioned to whatever planet uh, Ragnar decides to show up at and we've now got a copy of Starbane's Council showing up at planet number uh, two and planet number one. In addition to the Starbane's Council and Eldrath's, oh god, uh, in addition to the one in Eldrath's HQ and that uh, expression of, uh, I don't know, uh, sympathy for our Ragnar player is going to be uh, at the stimulus afforded by the Warlock Destructor now 
positioned at planet number one. So for the cost of two, it's three attack, one command, four hit points, and it's a Psyker trait unit, although Mind War is not in our card pool at the time of this, uh, you know, game being played. Uh, as a forced reaction, at the beginning of your deploy phase, you have to invest a resource in that unit to keep it alive. Uh, but a 3-4 with a command icon for the cost of two is definitely an incredible value. And, uh, you know, if our Space Marine wants to win at that planet, then he's going to have to kill that incredible value unit. So let's see, where do our warlords show up? Uh, is Eldrath going to arrive at planet number two? Looks like Ragnar goes to planet number five. So he's going to try to shut down uh, that massive income afforded to the Eldar player at that planet uh, and looks like some damage tokens are accidentally inadvertently getting scattered all over the place but Eldrath arrives to planet number two that is going to be a tactical squad Cardenas exhausted and it's going to be incredibly dead if not for the assistance of Indomitable but let's see if our Space Marine ends up accruing enough resources to play Indomitable or his third copy of Drop Pot Assault. So, planet number one, our Eldar players got four total command icons, which is greater than two command icons. So, two resources to Eldrath. Planet number two is going to be a total of two resources and a card for Eldrath. Planet number three is going to be a card and a resource for Eldrath. Note that Black Main Sentinel has now been repositioned away from planet number two uh, to planet number four. We've got a Black Main's Hunt. Uh, being played. So I think what's going to occur here is that's going to be four command icons worth of Black Main Sentinels currently sitting at planet number four, and uh, I believe Ragnar is going to show up at planet number three, so he's going to block off one card and one resource uh, for Eldrath at that planet, but at least I thought that was a Black Main's hunt, so let's see if Ragnar stays sitting at that planet or not. Oh, that's going to be nullified, so the Black Main's hunt is therefore going to be nullified, and I guess as a result, like I was saying, planet number three is going to be a card and a resource to the left for Eldrath and planet number four uh, because Ragnar's attempt at being cheeky was uh, dashed soundly thanks to Eldar shenaniganry. Uh, you know, I guess when you uh, toy with the powers of the warp, you can do some amazing things, but at what cost? Uh, so, I suppose Ragnar does shut off the Eldar Survivalist. He shuts off that Void Pirate, but for all of his efforts, he only reaps a mere one resource. Note, the initiative token is in the possession of our... I guess our Eldar player, and here's how I would resolve combat if uh, I were the Eldrath player. I, I would consider, like, my first attack being uh, possibly... Well, okay, so I guess he's going to have... It all depends on how many shields you've got in hand, but it's going to be the Starbane's Council taking a swing at the Blood Angels veterans. It's going to be the reaction associated with that. Three attack, three hit point, one command icon, three cost unit is going to be shaving a point of damage so long as it's ready off any incoming uh, damage source at all, be it from an attack or from a card effect. So Blood Angels veterans takes two points of damage. It itself takes a swing, kills that Starbane's Council. Uh, Beal Tan Guardians and the Warlock Destructor take a swing. I suppose in total that's going to be a dead Rogue Trader. It's going to be a dead Blood Angels Veterans. We're going to come to the end of the combat round. That is going to be a planet captured. So grats to Eldrath. He's now got uh, two green icons, two red icons, and a blue tech icon. And uh, that is going to be a grand total of, well, I guess it's going to be one resource stolen. So thanks, Osus4, for, uh, for considering, for continuing to deplete the Space Marine economy for putting the entire Imperium into a bit of a recession there. At planet number two, I can only imagine that Eldrath is going to win that rather uncontested. Uh, that will be his ability to relocate one of his units to any other planet he would like, so maybe he's going to save the... Or, uh, okay, yeah, Eldrath is indeed at that planet, so we are going to see a battle uh, effect. So maybe he's going to reposition uh, something like... He could move his Eldar Survivalist to that planet just to guarantee that he could get some resources, or he could move his Spirit Seer Arithal just to be another combat-capable unit. Looks like Archon's Terror is going to banish a copy of Black Main Sentinel away from that planet. Very interesting play there. And uh, we're going to see a Black Main Sentinel now take a swing. That is going to be a dead Eldar Survivalist. Eldar Survivalist is dead. Uh, may you rest in peace, my my dear underplayed friend. So Ragnar Blackmane mops up the remainder. The Void Pirate is going to be uh, quite handily dispatched. And, uh, you know, I suppose if there's anything that uh, the Space Wolves do well, it is going to be wreaking havoc on our poor 
little space marines. I believe Yavarn is going to be activated. I fail to see what Eldorath uh, put into play, if anything, but our space marine put a card that this is the first time I've ever seen it played, so, uh, you know, get it while it's, uh, get it while the getting is good, I guess you could say. It's going to be Veteran Barbarous uh, put into play in our space marines HQ, and if memory serves, that's going to be a 2-4 unit with two command icons. It's a unique unit, therefore it's immune to that Archon's Terror, that dastardly card effect which we've seen route a myriad space marine faction units thus far. Uh, but, you know, for the cost of 4, 2-4, two, if you're not able to benefit from its win enters play deals 2 points of damage to uh, quite a few different factions worth of units, then it's definitely not the best thing in the world. And it looks as though as we've moved past another HQ phase, you know, 4 resources and 2 cards for each of our players, we've got our Warlords all being commit to planet number 1. It is going to take a bit of a miracle uh, for Ragnar to be able to win this one. So, Ragnar shows up at planet number 1, Eldrath is going to show up at planet number Number one, Veteran Barbarous is going to be exhausted. It looks as though we saw at least a copy or maybe even two of Warlock Destructor being put into play. So the Black Main Sentinel is going to be exhausted. Ragnar shows up, but Veteran Barbarous is going to be exhausted. Planet number one, that is going to be a card. And two resources, one by Eldrath. Planet number two is going to be a card and a resource, one by Eldrath. And man, the number of uh, command struggles that Ragnar has won during this game, I would say that I'd be able to count on one hand, but I have completely lost count. So... What exactly are we going to see here? The answer is an absolute massacre. So let us hope for our Space Marine's sake that he's got a lot of tricks in his hand. It looks like he's got some Indomitables and some Draw Pod Assault, so this could get interesting. Ragnar's ability does manage to kill off that copy of Starbane's Council. The initiative token is going to be in Ragnar's possession, but there's going to be a lot of beef to chew through by, uh, you know, for our Eldar our player. And I really don't happen to know whether or not Eldar are vegetarian themselves, I could only imagine that uh, uh, individuals that are quite alright with firing shuriken catapults at their enemies probably are okay with ingesting a bit of uh, flesh. So, let us see. Ragnar is going to be the only space marine that can attack. It's hard to tell how much damage he's got, uh, thanks to the stacked nature of those tokens. Our Eldar player does not throw out a shield card, so that bloodied Reavers is going to be conveniently killed, and that's going to be at least one, yeah, one copy of Starbane's Council that's potentially going to be able to swing for five, albeit Indomitable can block X number of damage, where X is equal to any number. So, let's see. That's going to be Incubus Warrior trying to kill off that copy of Black Main Sentinel. Of course, each player's discard pile is public knowledge, and uh, I can only imagine that uh, Vasily is going to be looking for, oh god, I don't know, nullifies, he's going to be looking for Archons, Terrors, uh, all sorts of different things like that. I'm not sure we've seen a single two-shield value card uh, discarded by our our Eldar players, so I can only imagine he's perhaps got Empowers in hand, and oh my god, if you were to pay an imp uh, play an Empower right now, things would go all the way bad, so we've got the reveal of a hand, maybe that was the GG, but it looks like we just nullified something, and it looks as though we are attempting to perhaps do a Drop Pod Assault. Yes, that's it, that is indeed going to be the GG, looks like that was Spirit Seer Aerithal nullifying a Drop Pod Assault, our Space Marine took a moment to... Uh, uh, assess what he would have drawn, you know, had he been fortunate enough to have that effect resolve, but spoiler alert, uh, those Indomitables would not have been enough. Looks like our Eldar player had Gift of Isha's in hand. He could have recurred Starbane's Councils, Warlock Destructors, and things would have definitely gone all the way bad for our Space Marine, and he would have been uh, quite handily destroyed by the relentless onslaught of Klim Petrov there. So... Thank you very much for watching. Thank you again to Anton Elizarov for affording me the opportunity to, you know, just uh, host some of these fantastic videos taken from the 2015 Russian National Championships. It's a great honor to get the opportunity to spectate, commentate, and publish these videos, and I look forward to much more to come, uh, and in any case, at the very least, the remaining videos within this series. So, I hope you enjoyed this content. As always, if you did, be sure to hit that 
that like button and consider subscribing to my channel if you've not done so already, or if you are already subscribed, I always encourage you to share this content because the more engagement these videos receive, the more likely individuals are to stumble upon Conquest, they may give this game a try, join our living card game community, and of course, the more players we are in number, the greater message we stand to send to Fantasy Flight Games, telling them to continue to support this fantastic product. If at any point you'd like to get in touch with me, I would encourage you to do so through Facebook or on Twitter, and if at any point you'd like to support the Hive Tyrant to help me improve the audio and video quality of this channel to help me recover and recoup some of my file hosting and operating expenses, I would be absolutely honored, humbled, and deeply appreciative were you to consider donating a dollar or two on a strictly monthly basis to my Patreon. But, as always, thank you so much for watching, and once again, be sure to check back in again soon for much more Conquest LCG content to come.